We're at the 15th annual FGI Rising Star Awards here at Cipriani's in Midtown. We're keynote speakers, yeah. So we've had a collection for 30 years now. So, but, but we know what it's like to feel like a rising star. Back I then. love knowing that they're probably so nervous out there. It's really wonderful. It's a great energy for them to have. So we're we're looking forward to giving them a little bit of advice, hopefully, and to set them off in a great future. Let's talk to the nominees. I always wanted to, to have my own collection. I I came here from Pennsylvania with that dream, and so um, you know, I just. Times are tough right now in this industry, and I thought, what better time than just to sort of break away and try to establish my mark, and um, and so I did that. It's about 18 months I've been doing my own label. The line that I presented for FHI um, is my fall line, and it's very sophisticated, very elegant, for a woman that's not afraid to show what she is. I uh, design a line of men's and women's contemporary uh, uh, clothing, um, and it's uh, very cutting edge without going over the edge. You know, I like to update classic, modern pieces, and you know, really uh, add a new tailoring component to it. So, tell me about your line. Um, my line is based around architecture and interior design. My two other loves. Um, it's 1960s inspired. And I'm um, just honored to be here today. So here we are, and your daughter's being um, nominated. How does that feel? I'm very proud. She's been working very hard, and I, I think uh, I taught her well, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> I hope. Have, did you expect her to get into fashion? Uh, she was in acting, and uh, she was also in art, which she still is. But I was hoping she'd go into fashion, because I figured I could help her with that. She doesn't need my help. Our collection is a women's wear advanced contemporary line. We started, began with a concept of recreating the shirt dress, and now we've reinvented each season. We're going into our third season, and we're very excited and honored to be part of FGI and nominated today. Fashion has been something in my blood since a very early age. My grandmother was a couture client before World War II, so many of her, you know, her older clothes were made custom for her. And hearing the stories and growing up with that sensibility, left a very strong uh, impression upon me. It was rather formidable. And I started sketching clothes at the age of 12. We do women's ready to wear, and um, it's very sophisticated. We kind of we kind of like to pride ourselves that it appeals to a really wide demographic and age group, so that's kind of cool. We have a lot of fans that are very young and also that are, you know, in their 70s. Full Winter 12 will be my third season, and um, you know, I'm really going for something which is more than new elegance, so it's uh, very understated but sophisticated, made of noble fabrics and produced in Manhattan. Okay, and I know I've asked you before, but tell us again how you got started. Um, well, I, um, I basically came to it from the eye of a stylist and, you know, I, I wanted to, to produce things that I didn't see in the marketplace that I wanted to wear myself. So it was about building a wardrobe and, and from there it, it just it transpired into something bigger. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. So tell me about your collection. Um, my collection is, it's our fifth season coming up, which I can't believe. Uh, we make everything in New York, women's wear, we work with Bergdorf's, Harrods, some great stores around the world. Um, I'm only 25, so I was really lucky to find out what I want to do with my life at an early age and be able to focus on it. So um, it's so exciting to be here today and uh, be meeting amazing people. So it's really an honor. Great. And how did you get started? Um, I, I've been sketching forever, and I went to fashion school. I went to Central St. Martins. I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, moved to London for four years and spent my summers working with Mr. De Laurenta and Tom Ford while I was in school. We do um, bee-based body care. We keep bees in the Midwest. Um, we use only uh, organic, um, safe, certified practices for bees. We come from beekeeping backgrounds, and after many years of being you know, around on tour with raw honey, uh, we found a definite need for a higher-end uh, bee-based cosmetic line. I invented a better hair color, and it's I want every woman to reach her own personal hair color goals and men. And so I made a system, a hair color system, luxury hair color system that can be done at home or anywhere that you are on the road, on the go. Six Sense Perfumes, um, basically we kind of 
we translate artistic ideas into scents. We pair uh, prominent designers with uh, perfumers, and we give them 100% freedom to create a, um, a fragrance. Uh, we make small batches of perfume in Cologne. We're based out of Brooklyn, New York, and we're very influenced in uh, Native American herbal wisdom, out outdated outdated lore of perfume and medicines, American archetypes, and we present everything with a story because we're really into the story and the nuts and bolts of what goes into all of our fragrances. And we're a rising star. And you get started. We got started by making um, gifts for friends and kind of just, you know, experimenting with uh, perfumes. And we kind of discovered that we had a talent for it and um, took it from there. I have always been into jewelry. I've loved it forever. And about five years ago, I was lucky enough to make it, build it into an actual career. And uh, But I got started on my kitchen table, really. We are the third generation of jewelers, so we are not just designers, we are jewelers. Everything is handcraft. She handcrafted this piece, everything. She's the jeweler, I'm the creative director. She lives in Spain, in San Sebastian. I live in New York, so everything happens. Thanks to the internet. My career started in journalism, and in 2001 I designed my own engagement ring, and by 2005 I had a jewelry business. Oh, that's really great. Was that the first time that you designed anything? Was yes, in 2001, ring? yes. Okay, and what was the interest in doing that? I just wanted to have something very personal and unique. So, um, you know, one thing led to another, and so I blame the whole jewelry business on my husband. I made jewelry as a hobby to start with, and I was working a summer position with Cirque du Soleil, and a couple of performers saw my jewelry I was wearing and purchased some pieces, and it just sort of took off from there. Well, the line's called Tally Blanc. It's, this is our very first collection. Um, it's been uh, five months since development, and I'm really honored to be here and to be nominated by the fashion group. Um, we focus on detail and providing a really good product. Um, my background is gemology. How did you get started? Um, interesting story, really. Um, I was looking in the mirror one day and I wanted to uh, change the hardware on my handbag because I didn't like the way it looked with what I was wearing. And so I developed a product that has custom removable hardware so you can switch out. So like for example, these clips can come out and be changed to different colors or different fabrications. I have an accessories collection. Uh, based off, uh, you know, textiles, leather, and, and I'm from Istanbul, so I have I use like my my background from Istanbul and co combine it with my presence living in New York. How did you get started? Um, my dad was in the crocodile skin business since I was a child. I was exposed to the skins, and I, w I was obsessed with exotics. Like every time he had a couple of skins, I would do my my stuff, and that's how I get I got started. Well, you know, there's an old saying that necessity is the mother of invention. Um, I'm actually an engineer by degree, and found that I have a large size foot. I wear 15 and a half. Could not find shoes to fit, so I literally taught myself how to make them, and. After going through that process, I just kind of naturally, was a natural progression into women's footwear. We're Stella and Dot, and we're all about just vintage inspired, really fresh takes on, on jewelry and accessories. And what's unique about our business is that we sell through independent stylists, and we're all about empowering women and giving them ways to style their own life. Um, well, my original inspiration was my grandma Dot's jewelry box. So I really started from just taking those vintage elements and reinterpreting them in a really fresh, modern way. And my business partner, Jessica, founded our company, um, which is a really unique selling model um, that combines social networking, e-commerce, and home sales. Um, so uh, I have a menswear collection, uh, Ian Velarde. It is a, uh, it's a mix of sportswear, tailored clothing, uh, full collection, accessories. I uh, started about a year ago and uh, I'm selling uh, right now to Barney's uh, in five cities and parkandbond.com. Basically what we do is this kind of hybrid of tech plus tailored. We like to infuse a little bit of an athletic inspiration into uh, men's tailoring and sportswear. Okay. And how so, did you get started? Um, you know, I'm an architect originally, and I think that that, that idea of form and function has always 
resonated with what we do as a collection. We've kind of focused on non-denim products, so we launched the brand just really focused on khakis, canvases with different washes and treatments, and it's evolved into uh, now shirts, jackets, and uh, different areas. It's called Grown and Sung. Tell me about your collection, Simon. Um, my, I'm nominated for menswear today. Um, I've been in business five years. Uh, recently split the brand into two and actually recently just put it back together as one. Um, so, uh, namesake brand, Simon Spur, it's a high-end luxury menswear brand comparable to Gucci and Dries Van Noen and that kind of level. 100% manufactured in Italy. Um, more of a kind of understated uh, approach to menswear. Um, trying to redefine kind of the boundaries of sartorialism and compounding on kind of what Tommy Nutter did in the 60s and early 70s with the suit in Savile Row. So bringing back the suit for the, for the young modern guy. The name of my store is Realm. We basically carry everything from Europe on an exclusive basis. Our main line is Gitois. It's a leather and suede line that I'm wearing now and it's stretch leather and stretch suede and we're doing a great business with them. My concept is uh, a salon that caters to the highest retail and I'm, I am nominated in the retail category. So um, uh, I'm trying to change in my own way, humble way, the topography of the hair color world. Explain to me how exactly. I have created a salon that is based on the highest standards of design as far as color being the backdrop for color. And when my consumers come to my salon, they are surrounded by an amazing retail consciousness. Now, um, it is pretty much a combination of design and service. How did you get started with cosmetics? I started in cosmetics at Bloomingdale's as an assistant buyer, actually. And NARS was one of the brands that I worked with. And I absolutely fell in love with the brand. Um, I loved it so much that I just worked so hard to actually try to join the group. And finally, I've been here for about two years almost. As a child, when I saw the first advertisement of Divas Ungaro, I knew from then that I wanted to work in the fragrance industry. And then I had this passion really for smell. And um, it has always been a dream. And to become a perfumer was my biggest dream. And I'm so lucky to go to work every day and love my job. Because it's not a real job, it's a pleasure. Um, I started my own company around two and a half years ago. Um, I, uh, I'm an interior designer. Um, and, I, and I really started with a great client base and uh, a lot of luck and a lot of great help and support. So what does it mean to be nominated? This is very exciting. Um, Fashion Group International, I think, is a great organization that I recently learned about. And um, I think it's really important that they encourage young designers to uh, keep on going. Our collection is called Shiner. Uh, it's a brand is after a black eye, because I uh, produce goods out of upcycled um, discard of other industries. So. Um, pretty cutting edge stuff and uh, exciting. And how did you get started? Uh, I'm a pretty basic uh, startup. Uh, kind of scrapped from nothing, took what I had around, started in designing and producing goods and uh, luckily a lot of people really liked them and uh, we started selling and we got the snowball rolling so. Here we are. And here we are. And what is some of the advice you're going to be giving? Oh my God. Uh, always follow your instinct. Be yourself. You've got to be an individual. Yeah. Fashion's great. It's very collaborative, but we need you to have your own identity. That's the mm -hmm. point of being in it, right? It's like a big choir or a big stew. You've got to bring your best ingredient. Oh, yes. And a lot of love. That's the only thing that makes it work.